Hello my friends, in today's video we will take a look at the unboxing of iPhone 15 Pro and I would also like to share my first impressions and thoughts about the latest iPhone. There is actually a lot of new stuff on the iPhone 15 Pro, especially by iPhone standards, so let's get right into it. This year I have chosen the new natural titanium color scheme and 512GB of storage. I actually like all of the colors this year, but I guess that I kind of wanted to celebrate the fact that the iPhone now uses titanium by showing its natural color and it was a good choice, but more on that in a second. The unboxing is very straightforward as usual. The box is white, much like with the 14 Pro and there is no plastic wrap, which I approve of. The iPhone sits right on the top. There is no foil on the back side, so you just need to peel the white sticker from the front side and that is the unboxing. Besides the iPhone, you will also get a 1 meter long braided USB-C to USB-C cable, some paperwork and an Apple sticker. Because this is a European version, you will also get SIM card ejection tool. Much like with 13 and 14 Pro, there is no charger in the box, which is fine by me. We will get to the charging later on. Apple's marketing materials suggest that the natural titanium has almost golden tint, but that is not the case in reality. For all intended purposes, the color of this iPhone is silver or light grey. It has a subtle brushed texture, which gives the finish a depth of sorts. The surface finish is also much nicer than on the Apple Watch Ultra. A very important thing is that the surface is PVD coated. Titanium is a great material, but if you have ever had a watch made of bare titanium, you will know that it is not very scratch resistant. PVD coating is very scratch resistant, so that shouldn't be an issue. I can say that in combination with a fine woven case, it feels significantly lighter. A huge improvement are the curved edges. They provide much more comfortable holding and retain the flat edge design at the same time. If you decide to use an iPhone without a case, it will make a huge difference. If you use a case, it doesn't really matter. Fortunately, this is the European version, so there is a tray for physical SIM card. Honestly, I would and probably will miss the option to use a physical SIM card, which is not possible with the US version. Another curiosity regarding the EU version is that there is a CE conformity marking and a pictogram prompting you not to throw your iPhone 15 Pro into a trash can. The camera unit is very substantial, but I guess that everybody is used to that by now. Non-Max iPhone 15 Pro has a different camera specs than the Max, but this time I actually think that the smaller iPhone has a better setup with a 70mm telephoto lens. The most significant spec improvement of the 15 Pro seems to be the 24 megapixel resolution in JPEGs, so the cameras probably won't be the main highlight this year. I have taken a couple of JPEGs and the results seem very promising. In-depth review of the camera will be available soon. The display also seems to be carried over from the 14 Pro. It is a 6.1 inch 460 ppi display with 120Hz refresh rate and 2000 nits peak brightness which is still very impressive. Dolby Vision HDR content on this screen looks really great as usual. The camera cutout aka Dynamic Island is also carried over and the implementation is top notch. Honestly, there is absolutely nothing about this display that I can complain about, so I don't mind that it has been carried over at all. The only change is that the bezels are significantly larger. Together with the curved edges and lower weight, it changes the overall handling quite a bit and in a very positive way. It also makes the 15 Pro smaller, but the difference isn't that huge. 15 Pro uses the new A17 Bionic system on chip based on 3 nanometer architecture. iPhones have been able to make some pretty impressive stuff, such as edit 100 megapixel ROS with absolute smoothness for a while, so it is not a surprise that the A17 Bionic is incredibly powerful. Some AAA games should be available for the iPhone later on, so maybe that would be a good use for that 3 nanometer SoC. Apple has finally added Wi-Fi 6E support to the 15 Pro. 
One of the biggest changes in the iPhone's history is the switch to USB-C. I 100% approve. It is simply a better, more common standard. I am very happy that I will be able to carry one less cable and make more room in my cable cabinet. iPhone 15 Pro uses USB-C 3.0 gigabits per second standard. It is not a Thunderbolt port as some rumors suggested, but 10 gigabits per second is more than enough. The charging power appears to be about 27 watts, but I will have to do more tests on that. One more feature that I greatly appreciate is that you can limit the charging to 80%, which very significantly increases the longevity of the battery. I will make a separate video about the whole functionality of USB-C on iPhone 15 Pro, so stay tuned for that if you are interested. A battery is slightly larger in comparison to the 14 Pro at 3272 mAh. The battery life rating is surprisingly the same, but the A17 Bionic should probably be a little bit more frugal, so I hope that the battery life will be a little bit better. I've also bought this fine woven case in tube color, which is basically a dark tan. It looks nice, feels okay, but not particularly premium. The edges are very hard and the installation is quite difficult. Unfortunately, I have to confirm that the durability of this case is pretty much non-existent. It is already scuffed after just a couple of hours of normal use and to be clear, this is not the good kind of patina. I have no idea what Apple was thinking. Please just buy a normal silicon case instead. I've been using iOS 17 for a week now and the changes are subtle, but some of them are pretty nice. The new autocorrect is a big improvement for example. Last year I've said that the iPhone 14 Pro is the best iPhone since iPhone 10, and now I can say that the iPhone 15 Pro rounds up the package. I know that it is customary to criticize iPhones, but honestly 15 Pro is pretty much everything that I've ever asked from an iPhone. Lightning port and the lack of Wi-Fi 6E were my only complaints about the 14 Pro and both were fixed. Apple also went the extra mile with titanium construction, which is an improvement in my opinion. Subtle but significant physical changes improve the handling quite a lot. The performance is excellent, so is the display, and I'm also happy with iOS 17. Needless to say, my first impressions are very positive, so stay tuned for other iPhone 15 Pro related videos on this channel. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you have found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate our feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down, if you would like to ask anything or share your opinion please do so in the comment section and see you next time.